Hi guys, and welcome back to another episode of Frozen Fortunes. You join us here on Keradine Chowie's profile. I thought we'd have a little look at this before we get into the other stuff, because there is some stuff to talk about. We've been doing a bit of wheeling and dealing, and of course we've got to continue with our league run today. But yeah, since that first sort of burst onto the scene in the early stages of the season, he's not featured as much from the start. In fact, I don't, he's made 13 substitute appearances, and that's really drawn his rating down. Uh, when he starts games, he generally plays very well for us. We've just not quite found the room to fit him into the squad that much. But at the same time, he hasn't actually complained yet. So that, that's really nice to see. Driven personality. I really do think this guy could be something special for us. Just need to find the right place for him. But we have actually made a few signings too. And some outgoings as well. Thought I'd switch to this menu so you could see some other sort of stuff while we quickly discuss some of the awards that our players have won. And believe me, there's a few. Firstly, I was manager of the year, which is nice. Svenningsen is the Danish under-19 talent of the year, but he also made the Danish team of the year on the bench. And that's including all Danish players. Like, every single one including ones that play for the big sides in the big leagues so for spending to be on the bench in that uh, only 18 years old is astonishing as usual he also won the danish media young players and player of the year i believe bravo was players player of the year and media's player of the year so that, that's really nice to see even though he's not really hit the goals lately canate actually won goalkeeper of the year so that's nice the first time we've ever had one of those and we have only conceded 20 goals in 19 games second best defense in the league behind fc Copenhagen. so that really does say a lot for us this year i also thought i'd get back onto the board about increasing our coaching budgets and stuff like that so youth recruitment has been improved as is the junior coaching budget so hopefully when our youth intake comes around again this year there's a chance we might be able to get someone decent through it this time last few years have been a bit muddy since we had Svenningsen and Casper Nielsen and people like that coming through this year I hope we can change that as I said we brought in a couple of players and I'll show you those guys in a set but we've also had a player leave for uh, reasonably large money as well and a three or four fee paying loans have gone out too which should help us rejuvenate a bit more money for the rest of the year pay for some more transfers which is always nice obviously Levia has come in and joined us but you already knew that was about to happen I've already sent him back out on loan to get him some first team football uh since he's not gonna be playing for us anytime soon but I felt it was worthwhile us doing that I also picked up this young goalkeeper Mamadou Nyang for 50k now my scouts underestimated or overestimated his potential ability, but I figured with a driven personality, he's 19 years old, Senegalese, I think he actually signed, no, it was Senegalese club, uh, hasn't conceded a lot of goals there. I figured, you know what, it's a worthwhile choice to bring him in for 50k. I couldn't really say no for him. Um, he's already wanted. We're going to try and get him some loan spells and stuff. Just build him up a little bit. Now, this is Ayman Ziem. I don't know how to pronounce his name, um, so do let me know in the comments. He's coming from a Tunisian club, I believe, CS uh, Sfax. He is a central midfielder. Now, I know you know with me, it's like that meme, basically. Me... Any player is this a central midfielder. But um, this guy really does look like a very, very solid player. Like Not even any yellow stats. Only long throws and penalty taking are red. Everything else is very good for my money or excellent. Um, lots of great physical stats. Generally just good in a lot of areas. So I figured we couldn't really turn this guy down. He's cost half a million pounds. Um, and I know he's on decent money and a key player. But I just feel like getting in some real quality in that area to support Juan Shishi could make a hell of a difference. Particularly with Sergio Santos leaving at the end of the year. And obviously, you know, we've got Akinola playing in the more advanced position. So it does make sense to fill in some gaps there with some really good quality. And I feel like there's no way we won't make money on this deal anyway. Um, we've paid for half a million pounds for him. There's no way we'd let him go for less than about two or three million. So I feel like this could be another use of Traore, if nothing else. However, one player that has sadly left the club is Caleb Morley. I figured with uh, Zaim coming in, he was going to be better than Morley. Further down the pecking order would be pushed Morley. And I just figured since Brighton came in with a bid, I negotiated with them. Uh, the initial fee is £600,000, which means we've actually broken even on the Zayim deal already and actually made a little bit of money. But with offers, uh, with add-ons, it could go up to 900000 uh, just with like league appearances and stuff, plus a 50% of next sale fee clause. Uh, I think it's a reasonable piece of business for a player that wasn't getting in our team just to level things up and make that transfer for Zayim a little bit more fiscally responsible. Mahmoud Hassan has gone out on loan uh, to Advitabo over in Sweden. I, I just figured he wasn't getting game time for us and I wanted to keep him developing. Um, so it's a fee paying loan as well. They're paying between 14 and 20,000 pounds a month. That includes the wages, of course, uh, to have him at the club. So we could make like 100K out of this, which is basically his transfer value at the moment. So I wouldn't be too bothered about that one. Same dealio with Matthias Hansen. They're paying us 1,000 pounds a month plus some extra stuff just to keep him at the club, get him some football over at Lingby. Damgaard is a similar situation. I figured like he just wasn't getting in the team for us at the moment. He'd only made three starts all season. Figured getting him on loan for Esbjerg, get him some football, keep him developing, I suppose, even though he's 23. Uh, we can earn some money. That's the main thing. They're paying between nine and 12,000 pounds a month to have Yam Damgaard with us. That depends on whether he plays or not, I believe. Uh, so I couldn't really complain. Get some extra money there. And finally, Tonya Harding came back from his loan spell over in America and is now on loan at Randers. And again, they're playing his uh, wages, I believe, plus a uh, thousand pounds a month. So I can't really complain. Now, today we're playing at home against Vela, who have actually slipped all the way down to 12th in the league. I swear when we played them earlier this season and won, uh, they were much higher in sort of like sixth or seventh spot. We have got a nine point gap over FC Copenhagen. Bromby did win their game against Lingby, pushing them down as well. 
We've just got to try and manage that gap. Every win we get, I believe, is a step closer to us winning the title. We're more than halfway through the season when you think about it. It's 36 games, I believe. So I think it's doable. We've just got to keep, keep them at bay. Get as much believe as we can before the championship group and see what happens. Rogers Jr. is suspended today, which is a bit annoying as a result of a booking he got in the last game that we played before Christmas. So Carradine Chow, we all know, no doubt step into his roles today and hopefully do a good job. Now, we didn't have a lot of bids for our players in the Christmas window, which was surprising. Uh, the only ones we had bids for, we had a bid for Bravo or rather three, all from Argentinian clubs of like a million pounds. Nonsense bids. We've had up to five million for him in the past. And we also have Monaco coming with a seven million pound bid for Jonas Svenningsen, which of course prompted the usual discussion, the atmosphere, and then he stayed. So that's that's good there was no issues with that one at all unfortunately Rocco did tear a hamstring in one of the friendlies so it means that he will be missing which is annoying because he played really well however Pat Curtin has returned from his fractured skull to make his first appearances of the season which is nice Claudio Rivera isn't really developing the way I would like at the moment uh, he does seem to be straggling a little bit so we might have to look into that potentially and also it's about time Juan Shishi has lost the PPM of shoots from range Oh, he's still going to do it, but he's going to do it a lot less. And I really hope that's going to help us keep the ball, particularly with Zayim's take the tempo uh, kind of PPM, which is kind of cool. I don't really know what that means, but sounds good. I also had a little look at some of the players we've had on these little clauses that we've got, just to see how they're getting on at their new clubs. The only one that's really worth talking about is Alejandro Perez, who's actually featured in 20 championship games for Reading this year. His value is decent. Um, he strikes me as the type of player that genuinely could make us a lot of money down the line with the transfer. He's still not particularly old. He's worth £400,000 at Reading, and he's on a lot of money, and he's playing games for them in the championship. So he genuinely could make us some money down the line. Right, so it's now a question of what do we do for today's game? The front three, mwah, lovely old job. I really am apologetic to Ursan, but at the moment, he's just fallen so far off the pecking order. And I really can't, I don't know. I don't think it's the wrong idea. The fact is, we're top of the league by nine points. We've played really well this year. Spenningson and Bravo are getting the goals. Ursan just maybe didn't have the quality. He was great for us last year, but we've just slowly overtaken him this year. Uh, Santos will play in there maybe, although I might actually swap these over because Shishi is back to fitness now. Just about. He had a little knock. Um, I might drop Santos out and put Zayim in. I've made a personalized instruction because he's better as a deep line playmaker when he plays in this role. So I figured we'd try him out there. I've tried him in both roles and his, his performances actually weren't great in either of them. Even in friendlies where we were winning five or six nil, he was struggling to get above a seven. So we might need to monitor that. Um, and keep an eye on him for now. But we're going to play him as a deep line playmaker. He's got similar kind of stuff, except he has to hold position because he's a deep line playmaker. So we'll, we'll see on that one. On the bench, Kanate, Safi, Santos, Yakim, uh, Ikonun, who's back, but he might go out on loan still, Hil Tavares, and Johnny the Executioner, Iya, as some people call him because he comes on and kills games off. And uh, hopefully he can do that again today. So opposition report, a 4-4-2 with a ball winning midfielder and Eskacin uh, as their ball winning, uh, their advanced playmaker. They do have wingers, but I'm not so bothered about those wingers in 4-4-2s. Uh, one of them is an inverted winger, which is kind of interesting. So what we kind of do with this game, we'll, we'll often have a lot of possession against teams that play 4-4-2. So that's fine because we'll dominate the center of the midfield. We're going to just get Eskerson out the game, mark him up, and that should be enough for us, hopefully. We can deal with the wingers on an as-and-when basis. I might figure out some ideas of what I kind of want to do with them. I wish there was a way that you could set genuine instructions that would happen every single game, but that won't that will only ever let you do it for position and not for role. So I don't want to mark him up a ball winning midfielder, for example, if he happens to play in the same position as another team's advanced playmaker. That would be a nice little feature I'd like to see. Also, can I just say, the comments lately have been really nice. Like, I know that it's weird that I would even mention that because unfortunately on YouTube, you generally notice these things more as a rarity. Um, not for me specifically, but just on the YouTube as a whole. But I've just been receiving a load of nice comments lately. So that's been really nice. So thank you. Right then, question of the day. And today's question is this. Have you ever discovered a young player in FM before he was famous? Um, me, not really, because most of the time when I'm signing players, they're almost always regens due to the saves I do and my general preferences within those saves. So it rarely find myself actually signed. We signed Ramadan Sobi, I think, before he signed for Stoke, but I mean, he's hardly, you know, <laughs> that kind of player. But yeah, let me know. Have you discovered anyone before they were famous on FM? Svenningson's head around the post there. Uh, we've got a lot of the ball in the opening 10 minutes, which is what I like to see. It's a case of just slowly but surely break these guys down. Eric is going to be a tough one today, I sense. Bravo. Oh, Svenningson needs to make the run. He has. Svenningson's in. Ah, Zaim. Shishi. That, there you go. He would have shot. On a previous day, he possibly would have shot there. And Zaim does brilliantly to win the ball back. Moskutsa. That's more like it. Shishi. Bravo. He's through. And it's saved by Frank. But again, good start from us. But yeah, if you have any ideas for a question of the day, drop those in the comments too with the hashtag QOTD. Curtin. Zaim. Akinola. Into the channel for Bravo. Oh, he could have used him. Oh, Shishi's through. And saved by Frank. A good little run from Shishi. Another thing about him not taking those long shots, I think, that's going to help us is because he's not taking them, he's in better positions to... Right, this is a position where he maybe should have taken it, doesn't matter, to do things like that. Fabian Moskutsa with the goal. B67-1. 
Vela nil. And we'd at the moment be 12 points clear at the top of the league. Yeah, because she, she's not taking long shots on, he's able to pick passes out like this. Look at this. Moskusa just rattled that in. But also, it means he's playing a pass often, playing a 1-2 with people and making those runs beyond like he wasn't before. Um, Chow, he, he seems to be doing all right. That's fine. Frank looking long. Easily cut out by Rivera. Knocks it down for Zaim. Akinola. Zaim, I feel like, will have really good pass completion inside this team. That's what it just feels like to me. Which is where we need Rogers Jr. or... Oh, Shishi! Saved Svenningsen. I am very, very pleased with the way this game is going so far. Chances galore. Possession galore. Domination at the moment, but we do need the second goal. Amoa bringing it all the way out. Akinola. Round the top for Svenningsen. He's through! And round the post for Jonas Svenningsen. Another chance. We need the second goal. How we? Can he find a cross? He does. Bravo's in! Oh, what a chance again. That was a really, really tight angle from Bravo, though. Um, but what a first half performance from us. This is about as good as I've seen us play, uh, honestly, since we've on, been on this winning run. But we are only one goal up, and that is a slight disturbance in the force for me. Uh, wide bullet. Oh, well won. Akinola with the breakaway now. Can he get it? Yes, he can. Brilliant from Sani Akinola. He's got to look inside. He's gone past one. He's got to find Bravo, really. He does. Oh, what a great goal that is. That is something else. B67-2. Vela nil. That is sensationally good counter-attacking football. I've got to say, this is about the best I've seen us play as an overall team for a long, long time. Akinola's just breezing past people down the wing. He waits for the perfect moment for the defender to commit himself. Ball across. Mariano Bravo. First goal he scored for quite some time. 14th of the year. 2-0 up. Wow, what a performance. One back by Zaim in the midfield. He is playing like a general at the moment. I'm pleased with his performances so far. Shishi. I think he's got he's more all, he's better all round than Santos is as well. Moskutsa's ball in. Svenningsen! Oh my life, it's 3-0. Baby and Svenningsen. Jonas Svenningsen with the goal. And look at this performance. I know I keep saying it, but this is sensational stuff. They're just linking up so, so well. Those middle three as well. Akinola, Zaim, and Shishi. That could be a title-winning combination. Jonas Svenningsen now with the header goal. That's 3-0. That's game, set, and match now, lads. I'm not even sure where we go from here. 62% possession, 3-0 up. They've only had one shot in the entire game. We've created, I think we've created about enough chances to create three goals. I'm so pleased with that. Let's just go for the second half. But just try and keep that clean sheet. That's what I'm really interested in here. Akinola again, brilliant stuff. Svenningsen, right, time to take some players on. What's he got? Round one. Oh God, look at this. Look at this from Jonas Svenningsen. Oh, <laughs> this is insane. 4-0 to B67. Mariano Bravo with the goal. Jonas Svenningsen hit. This is what he's in the team for. This is sensational stuff. On the wing. Round his man like he's not even there. Another one faces him up. Goes past him as well. Pulls it back. Bravo strike. 4-0. What a performance this is. I've got to say, I'm a little bit in shock at how well we've played in this match. Um, they've all played their part. Zayim just like a midfield general. Bravo. Oh my goodness. Can he square it for... He has! It's 5-0! <laughs> We're 5-0 up, Bravo with a pair, Svenningsen with a pair, and we could be on for like a record-breaking win in this game. We've only played 50 minutes. Great look at that for the volleyed through ball from Keradine Chowie. Bravo, my lord, just slips it across for Jonas Svenningsen this time. They're both on a hat-trick now. Tell you what, I feel like having Zaim in the midfield and uh, Juan Shishi not taking long shots all the time has just turned this midfield into an absolute... I just, I, I'm lost for words at the moment. Next level good. Uh, oh, good lord. Bravo's through again. Can he square it? Oh, he's missed! That could have been 6-0, and Mariano Bravo probably should have scored there. Yeah, as, as good as we've been, and we've been superior in every possible factor in this game, and rightly so, um, Vela have been truly dreadful. This is one of the worst I've ever seen a team play against us. They're just giving us space every time we want it. And Svenningsen's now hit the post when he could have had another one there. Okay, around about, we'll make some changes after this. Uh, maybe get Johnny the exit. Oh, hello, Makuli. God, God, don't let him score. It's gone a bit too wide, I think. Saved by Amoa. He had to do something and he's done it. Right, changes afoot. I mean, they've all been flawless, practically, in this game. Shishi and Zayim in the midfield. He's not got an assist or a goal today, but I, I don't even care. He's played superbly. Right, what changes do we make? Strikers are both a bit knackered. I'm tempted to get Svenikin off and Johnny Iya in for a little bit of a run out there. Maybe get... um. Tavares in there, and also get Bravo off for Mark y uh, Yakim. Just make three subs now. Why the hell not? Let's get a, front, a different front three on, uh, full of fresh legs, and see how they do up against this Vela defense. Ball in. We probably won't score any goals uh, against them now, but I wouldn't even care if we won this game 5-0. I want the clean sheet, though. Yeah, we, we've literally done nothing in this game since we made all those changes around about the 60-minute mark, but I, I'm all right with that. It's allowed the players to sort of rest in possession, uh, really. We haven't conceded, which is the main thing. They've never really looked dangerous in this one. Players have just been playing the ball around quite nicely, it seems, for this entire period. Moskutsa. They're just keeping the ball until the game finishes at the moment, I think. 
They, we could have had as many as we wanted in that game, but 5-0 is perfectly fine by me. Bravo's man of the match, but Svenningsen is just as good. Chances, key passes, we dominated them. Um, also, we scored four goals in 11 minutes. That little spell just blew them out the water. And that, guys, is how I feel like we might actually have a chance of winning the league this year. Right then, guys, we're back on the day of the game away at Esbjö. As you can see, Lingby have just smashed Norgeland 4-0. Midtjylland only got a draw away at Silkeborg, which is a tough one for them. But more importantly, um, FC Copenhagen, after the game we played last time, drew 0-0 away at Randers, who, have, okay, are in better form again. Uh, they did have already smashed Bromby 4-0 in their most recent games, I'll just show you now. But it does mean that a win against Esbjö today would push us 11 points clear at the top of the league with 15 games to go. That would be one hell of a situation, and I think it would be difficult for us to throw it away, particularly if we win today. Our next game is against bottom of the table Suniusk at home. However, we might have a slight issue today, and that is that Ayman Zaim uh, picked up a little knock in training during the week, and he's not really fully fit for this game. But I'm tempted to start him anyway, just because of how well he played in the previous game. Chowi will drop out, though, and back will come Carl Rogers Jr. He played excellently in the last game. I cannot take that away from him, but I still want to make sure that we've got our best foot forward with that. Um, but it does show you just how good Chowi can be when he comes in and does a job. When he starts games, he plays superbly well. So, on the bench, Kanate, Chowi, Santos, Yakim, Seifi, Tavares, and, of course, Johnny the Executioner Iya. Right, let's have a look at what they're planning on doing against us. Yeah, see, this is the difference. Um, they're playing a defensive midfielder instead of... So, it's all like a 4-1-2-2-1 kind of situation. What mentality? Standard, highly structured. Mm, okay, so obviously we're going to um, mark the crap out of Karen and their advanced playmaker. They've got a winger and an inside forward, so we'll mark the crap out of them. We'll do what we do with those. As for the defensive midfielder, we'll play it by ear. I just noticed that they've got Pierre-Yves Julien playing in their midfield as a box-to-box -box midfielder. I assume that is the lad. I feel like if there's any game we're going to slip up on, it's going to be this one. Um, hopefully we can do well enough on the night. But I feel like if there's a game we're going to not quite be able to pull off what we've done lately it will be this one just because i'm not entirely familiar on the best way to get around the tactic that they're playing moskutsa does brilliantly stopping him at least from dictating the play julian vermier jensen caught up that's well played again over the top svenningson's got the pace he's through square it oh he doesn't need to jonas svenningson i think they hit the crossbar i don't care esbjörn nil jonas svenningson won He's just showing every possible attribute that I could want from him at this point now. It's getting silly. Akinola, brilliant ball. The pace and power from Svenningsen here brings it out of the air. I thought this chance had gone. Just drives towards the goal and it goes in off the post or something. I don't care. We have the lead in Svenningsen. That's 12, sorry, 13 league goals and 12 assists he's got in the league this season in 21 matches. That is astonishing. Vermeer, Drea, Blint. Oh, what an equaliser. Kareem Vermeer. It's not been coming per se, but they probably deserve it just from the build-up on that move. That's really good football, and they've just torn us apart on this play. That's, that's frustrating. Um, we've marked up the, the key men here, but this is just really nice football. Vermeer just rolls it outside for Drea, takes one touch, ball in, great header. It's 1-1, and it's been fairly tight. Right, we've got to go. I'm, I'm a little bit confused as to what he's trying to do there. Doesn't matter. Svenningsen, can he pull it across for someone? Oh, he can. Jonas Svenningsen is just the man at the moment. Um... If he carries on this form for the rest of the season, I can see no reason why he won't be, win player of the year, golden boot, assisting boot, I don't know, golden tulip, I don't know, <laughs> just made that up. Um, he has to get a Denmark call-up soon, surely. Like, he, he cannot be that far away from an official Denmark call-up. I think player of the year is fully in his grasp, considering how bad he was at the start of the year. Still getting assists, but in front of goal, he was a real problem. And now he's just, he's turned a corner with that one. 13 goals in the league, 13 assists in the league already. That is insane. Oh dear, that's poor. Doesn't matter, keep the ball. Ah, right, problems now. That's a good ball through Vermeer's through. That's a good first touch from him. And it's a great goal. I'll tell you what, Karim Vermeer is keeping Esbia in this game. Oh my God. Um, Just that extra player they've got shielding the back four is enabling situations like that to happen that was down to zaim unfortunately i might have to get him off this is brilliant though he's still got three players to beat they're getting right in on him and it's a brilliant finish in the bottom corner i feel like we're a bit unlucky but still but okay it clearly appears that i haven't quite figured out a, a way of playing against this system yet oh i mean we're still playing well in the game but just defensively there's something quite a little bit missing i think maybe um it's the deep line playmaker or, or the, the defensive midfielder that they've got um Maybe not marking him as such, because he's not going to do much from a... Yeah, but we, we want to get in a bit harder on him, perhaps. Try and force him off the ball a bit more. Uh, yeah, we'll also close him down too. Santos. That's better. Svenningsen. There. Oh, no, it's E, of course. Svenningsen's on the other side now. This is the last player we want there, but Svenningsen's still there. Oh, what a chance again. Svenningsen somehow nearly turned that into a goal. 
probably the worst. It should have been the other way around. We're going to go to mixed crosses. Try and mix things up a little bit. See if we can't catch him out. Get Ia to find that winner for us or something. Um, hey, all good things come to an end. We've played fairly well on the night, but not as well as we have done in previous games. Ah, oh, this is not happening, is it? Four minutes which have immediately disappeared. And it does look like it's going to be a two-all draw here. Away at, um, well, mid-table and nothing sort of SBO team. And, oh, <gasps> bad, bad defending from Rogers Jr. there. We've got away with that one a little bit. I still feel a bit unlucky. We've created enough chances to probably win this game still. Bit unfortunate in places, but I feel like they deserved it purely from Vimier's performance, really. Um, he he deserved a point. The rest of the team, perhaps not so much. Um, we didn't create enough key passes in this match either. Svenningsen was still excellent, but not good enough for man of the match today, though. The central defenders did not play well in that game, but either way, we're still nine points clear at the top of the league. Yes, it could have been 11, although it kind of briefly was for a moment, but still, we've got a good margin at the top of the league, and that, that's kind of what I want to see. Um, so let's see where we're going to come back in the next video, because we're going to do big chunks again. So, well... The rest of these games, so there's no way we're not going to be in the championship group. We'll obviously be going through the rest of these. Um, so that's what, one, two, three, four, five of the league games there. I might do these six games here off camera and then come back for the first two games of the championship group in the next episode. I think that seems like a reasonable amount of stuff <laughs> to get done in there. That's a decent number of games off camera. Um, some winnable ones in there. I think as long as we can maintain a sort of seven, eight point gap over FC Copenhagen going into the championship group. We should be okay because they're going to start winning games at a canter now that they're out of Europe. We just know it's going to be the case. We're going to have our, it's going to be bloody difficult even from where we are to win the league, but we're going to do our bloody best. Uh, we're going to have to play against them again. But I still think as long as we come up against a lot of teams playing the sort of systems we know how to play against, we should still be able to get the wins, hopefully. Unless this, uh, like the two all against Esbjerg or whatever it was earlier this season was, uh, yeah, that was the sort of start of a bit of a patchy run for us where we just couldn't quite get the ball over the line in some games. So hopefully that's not the start of that again today. If you have enjoyed this episode, and I really hope you have, we won 5-0 in the first game for crying out loud, then do drop a like on the video. That'd be fantastic. And if you're new to the channel, hit that big old subscribe button. And I will see you guys in the next episode for our first games in the championship group as the countdown to us potentially winning our first ever Danish league title is fully underway now. We could potentially be right in the battle. I think it's going to be closer than it is right now, but I still think we've got a hell of a chance. I'll see you guys soon. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.